Jesus. <laughs> just watched a very very good movie a movie called come and see and it's easily the best war movie I've ever seen it illustrates brutally uh, World War II on the Eastern Front and the extermination squads and what they did their brutality it's just a very good movie very sad it did uh, I will admit it made me cry at the end of it which fuck my phone which uh, somewhat reassuring because it's always nice to know that I can still cry very good thing to cry. There's nothing wrong or shameful about crying. It's a sign of empathy for oneself and other people, I think. Having that, or having not forgotten that. Yes. But it gave me this idea of a bellwether a means of identifying good versus bad ideas and the brutality of that movie all this war brutality it comes from dividing people into different groups people want to have their tribe and to have people they can attack or maybe they're tricked into wanting that but whatever the case, I think that any ideas or ideologies that require the division of people into different groups, which divide humans further, all of these, I think, are bad ideas. I'm going off of the criteria of unnecessary brutality, why did the Germans, or the Nazis, why were they so keen on why they take such joy in the ransacking and the murder of families and children and old women and unnecessary cruelty well because their ideology told them that these people were nothing but um, burdens nothing but pollutants in the human gene pool that they were dead weight that they were animals, that they were the other. And so they felt not only vindicated killing them, but they felt righteous in doing so. Because to them it was like mopping up a puddle of vomit. And it's not just Nazism which does this. Communism does it too. Proletariat and bourgeoisie. Most ideologies do it. Antinatalism does it. Breeders, antinatalists, natalists. These are groups. And if you ever look online, you'll see much of the hate put out towards breeders by antinatalists of certain stripes. Most ideologies support dividing people into different groups. Are these real groups? Are these tangible groups? Strip away enough illusions, enough matter. Strip a man naked and remove him from his groups. He's just a dude. So many false divisions. We need to stop dividing ourselves like this. No more distinctions like this. And this tool, this is a tool, injecting division into a population is a tool for control as well. I think it's a tool for control in the United States. 
the racial hatred. This whole racial business is stoked by the corporations that want to keep people at each other's throats. I think this whole wokeness thing, I think the reason it's promoted so much by big business is to scare people and to cause them to separate into warring camps so that they're at each other's throats rather than fighting for a better economic situation, a more fair economic situation. If you keep the Christians and the gays yelling at each other, if you keep the men and the women yelling at each other, if you keep the races struggling against each other and trying to put one over on each other constantly, they're busy doing that while you can pick their pockets. And that's just what happens. Division. All this false division. We're all, none of us asked to be born. We're all put here. We're all stuck here. And... We ultimately have no real freedom. So why must we hurt people? Why must we attack them or do harm to them based off of things that neither of us can control? I can't control my demography. I can't control my neighbor's demography. So why should I attack them over it and struggle and all this stuff. I don't know. Hell. Hell world. It's a hell world, isn't it? There's no rectifying it. There's no solving it. There's nothing that anyone can do. The odds are so stacked against this. It seems. And people enjoy it. People enjoy having their tribe and having the enemy tribe to attack and strategize against. It's like a game in some ways. But it's a nasty game that ends up in tragedies and massacres. That's when the fun ends. It's so comforting to have one's faith, whether it be a religion like Christianity or Muslim, Islam, or if it's a political ideology like communism or fascism, or if it's even a philosophy like, oh, I'm a theist, or I'm an antinatalist even. These are tribal things. These comfort us. We need to... How do you go through without getting sucked into any ideology at all? Because it's these ideologies that breed these divisions... I don't want to have any ideologies. I don't want to be... I don't want my individuality subsumed into some sort of label. I agree with antinatalists on the core things. But I see within antinatalism this Borgish streak developing cult leaders and cultists developing and Mendham the guy who introduced me to the term Borgish that sort of thing a person who I like to watch well he's kind of cultish he's kind of like a cult leader in a way I see the way that his followers emulate him and appease him and grovel at his feet I think he enjoys it somewhat I think he has a little Jesus complex I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to listen to anyone. I want to take ideas, and if one idea sucks, I want to get rid of it as quick as possible, and I'll take an idea that's superior to it. It's like you, you subscribe to an ideology, and you get one good idea, and you're saddlebagged with 30 fucking stupid ones. Why can't you just take all the best ideas from all the different ideologies and come to your own conception of the world? Why must you always follow people? Why must you always worship at the, their legs, worship at their groins? Think for yourself. Everybody needs to think for themselves 
Everyone needs to have the compassion to let other people think for themselves. No more cult leaders. No more cults. No more pyramids. No more owners. No more property people. Exploitative relationships. Get rid of all that. Get rid of all divisions. Maybe we'll have peace once there's no more divisions. At least we'll be able to finally get past all the bullshit. The bullshit feather, what are they called? Feather wars? Those wars that native tribe, flower wars, that's right. Get past all these pointless, time-wasting flower wars, which can often be quite bloody, and try to build something that doesn't suck. Because right now, this current society sucks. It's totally inefficient garbage run by greedy madmen and dullards. It's stupid. It rewards shysterism and punishes uh, honesty. It's a sick society. Why are people so cruel to each other? Why so cruel to each other? It's because that's what the structures of the society encourage. Because... It's so tenuous, our existence, when the econ economic situation is so brutal. It's so tenuous that we will, we will stifle our empathy and we will, instead of treating our fellow men with generosity, we will be inclined to greediness because of worries of falling into an untenable situation. It's so easy to get stuck on the streets in this society. I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling, but ultimately, the idea is division. Ideologies that divide people into different categories. These are all fake categories. And they're taking something which is continuous and trying to discretize it. Which should not be done on human beings, more complex feeling individuals. So I'm against all these ideologies and ideas that divide people arbitrarily because it will lead to death, it will lead to slaughter and massacre in the extreme, which must be avoided because that's horrific. That's hell on earth.